friends, Elizabeth here from Plant Based Bride and I'm back with another video. Today it's going to be a tiny bit different because obviously I'm not planning, but I'm going to be talking you through my essential bullet journal supplies. Now just a couple disclaimers before we jump into everything. Disclaimer number one, these are just my current favorites. I'm always trying new things, so who knows what I'm gonna love next week or next year. Disclaimer number two, your favorites may be a little bit different than mine and that's totally fine. I would actually love to hear what your favorites are, what your essential bullet journal supply list would be. Please let me know in the comments so that everybody can check it out and find some new awesome supplies. And the last disclaimer, but definitely the most important is you don't need most of these supplies to have a bullet journal. All you need is a notebook and a pen or a pencil and you're good to go. I know it can be hard in the bullet journal community, especially online. You see that people have a bunch of fancy supplies. They're using washi tape and they're using watercolors and they're using a million different things to get these beautiful spreads. And it can feel really intimidating if you're new to bullet journaling, but you don't need any of that stuff, I promise you. If you check out my first bullet journal video where I flipped through my first ever bullet journal, you'll see that it's literally just a pocket notebook I had on hand and whatever pen is closest to me. It's not fancy, it's not artistic, I didn't use a bunch of expensive supplies. It was a notebook and a pen and that's it. So now that we've got those disclaimers out of the way, it's time for me to share with you my essential bullet journal supplies. Let's get right into it. The first thing you're going to need if you're going to start a bullet journal is a notebook. This is the notebook I'm using right now. It's from Dingbats and this is their Great Barrier Reef notebook from their Earth collection. I also highly recommend their Wildlife collection, which was their original set of notebooks that are a little bit more affordable than the Earth collection. If you're interested in a detailed review, I will link the video I made reviewing both the Earth Collection and the Wildlife Collection just a couple weeks ago on my YouTube channel. It'll be right here for you to check out. You don't need to get a Dingbats notebook though. There are so many notebook options out there. The two main things that I personally look for in a notebook are that it's generally A5 size. This one is a little bit larger than a standard A5, but only by a tiny bit. While some people do a pocket size notebook, some people do an A6 notebook, which is larger. For the most part, you're going to see people using this size, which is an A5. And I personally prefer a dot grid page over any other option like a blank page, a standard grid or a lined. I personally just find dots the most versatile as they allow you to have a bit of a guideline to make sure that your lettering is all the same size or that your spreads are evenly laid out without being too intrusive. I find the dots kind of disappear into the background once you've finished your spread, they're not too noticeable, but the fact that you have these evenly spread out dots really helps me anyway to set up my spreads. If you're looking for something cheaper, I've actually heard really good things about Michael's Artist Loft notebooks, which I believe are around the $5 mark. So definitely Definitely check those out if you have a Michaels near you and you're looking for something a little bit more on the cheaper side. The next thing I want to talk about is really basic and that is a pencil. I'm sure you all have a pencil at home so I probably don't need to ramble on about this but as you probably know if you've watched my videos I like to lay out all of my spreads using a pencil first so I can make sure that I'm happy with how everything looks before I make it permanent. You can of course use any pencil for this and I do have a bunch of random pencils lying around but if you really want to know my very favorite pencil in the entire world, I'll tell you. The Palomino Blackwing. This is the best pencil I've ever used for just general writing. It erases really cleanly and it looks beautiful, which I am not ashamed to admit is something that I appreciate in a pencil. You may be able to tell that I've used this a lot as I've sharpened it so much that it's become tiny, but I'm still using it and it's still going strong. Another benefit to a pencil like the Palomino Blackwing over say a Staples pencil is that the eraser that comes on these is a lot nicer. I would happily use this eraser in my bullet journal and not worry about any kind of weird smudging or staining or ripping of the page. I'd be a bit more concerned with these standard pink erasers that come on cheaper pencils because I do find they tend to leave pink smudges on the page or they just don't do a great job of erasing in general. So that's something to keep in mind. But generally for using a pencil, you definitely don't have to splurge for something like this Palomino Blackwing. You can definitely use whatever pencil you have on hand. Now, if you are going to be using a cheaper pencil, I would highly recommend using a separate eraser. So my favorite eraser to use my bullet journal is the mono plastic eraser from Tombow. This is my go-to eraser. It just erases wonderfully. It doesn't leave marks on the page. It does a really good job. It's simple 
I like it. If you want a bit of a cheaper option, I also really like these Pentel clicker erasers. I've been using these since I was in elementary school and there's something just so satisfying about the clicking. You know what I mean? It's also great that you can just buy the refills that are really affordable. You can get a pack of refills. It's also really convenient that you can just click back your eraser, throw it in your bag and not worry about it getting dirty. The last of my basic essential supplies, the things that I use on a daily basis is a daily writing pen. Now the pen I used to use for my daily tasks was my Secura Micron. This has been my go-to pen to use in my bullet journal for at least a year now. But I noticed recently a problem with this because it is a felt tip. I've found that as I write with it, especially if I use it every day, the felt tip actually wears down pretty easily and you end up with a thicker line than you started with. This becomes a problem when you specifically want a certain thickness of a line. So this one, 03, you expect it to have a certain thickness. And then if I grab, say, a 005, this is supposed to be a lot thinner. But I found as I was using these on a daily basis, for example, I used to use the 01 on a daily basis, it would get thicker and thicker over time. And if I went back to fill out an old spread and used the same pen, so I'd have a consistent pen thickness throughout the spread, I found that it was actually thicker than it used to be because I'd been using it and wearing down the tip. So since I discovered that, I've actually stopped using these as daily writing pens. You can still definitely use a felt tip pen if that's what you prefer, but I just find I don't love wearing down the tip so quickly and ending up with an inconsistent thickness. I find the tip wears down a lot more quickly than the ink runs out and that just kind of feels like a waste since these are more expensive pens. So I would not recommend using a felt tip as your daily pen if that's something that might bother you. If it doesn't bother you, then the Microns are a great option for that. And the Le Pen drawing is a new discovery for me, which is also really great. It is also a felt tip. So it has that same problem of wearing down over time, but this one is great because it has less smudgeability in my experience anyway. So if you're left-handed or if you're impatient like me and like to erase a spread before really waiting the full amount of time, you probably should to make sure the ink is dried. This one's gonna give you less smudging than the Microns will. So since I've kind of been moving away from using felt tip pens as my daily writing pens, I've actually moved towards using gel pens in my bullet journal. So my two favorite options for gel pens are this Secura Jelly Roll gel pen in a 08 tip and this Pentel Slissy gel pen in a 04 tip. So the 04 tip from the Pentel Slissy is of course a lot finer than the 08 tip here. So this one is the one I use when I want a thinner line when I'm writing. This one is really great, it's really smooth. I first fell in love with the Pentel Slissy when I was using their gold gel pen. This is actually a 08 tip, but this gold gel pen is really lovely and I was using this in my December plan with me video. And since using this quite a bit throughout December, I decided to try the black one as well and I'm really enjoying this. And as for the jelly roll, I originally had the white one and I used that as my white gel pen whenever I needed one and decided to give the black one a try. And this one's really nice, it writes really smoothly and it's great for a bolder, thicker line. So these two are my go-to for a daily writing pen. So depending on your preference, if you're more of a fine line kind of person or if you're more of a bold line kind of person. And because they are a gel pen, they write so smoothly and you don't have to worry about the tip wearing down. Now, as for my two runners up, neither of these say the specific tip width on them, but I would say they're pretty similar to the Jelly Roll. So they're probably in a 08 kind of range, maybe 05 to 08. There is the Uniball Signo pen and we also have the Pilot G2. Both of these are retractable and have little rubber grips. So they're comfortable to write with. And again, they have a little bit of a thicker line. So they're great for a bold line. So now we've covered the basics. We have a notebook, a pencil, an eraser, and a daily writing pen. It's time to move on to the slightly less basic essentials that I still use on a daily basis. So the first thing in that category is a ruler. I don't need to use a ruler. I could draw relatively straight lines without one, but since I have some shaky hands and a little bit of a perfectionist streak, I prefer to use a ruler to make sure my lines are perfectly straight and very clean. You can of course use whatever ruler you like. This is just the one I have. It's the Westcott Microband Ruler. It's a pretty standard ruler, nothing particularly special about it. It's just the one I have. The next thing that I find super convenient and I would definitely buy again if I lost it is my Picket Circle Master template. These circles are so convenient. Anytime I wanna draw a circle, I pull this out to make sure I get the perfect 
perfect circle. I love this template. I use it all the time. You will have seen that if you hang out here on my YouTube channel. So I highly recommend this to anyone who draws a lot of circles but has trouble making them perfect. So now it's time to talk about some of the more fun supplies. The first thing in this category that comes to mind is drawing pens. So I won't go into detail because I did mention these already, but what I use for the most part for drawing in my bullet journal are my Sakura Micron pens. These ones come in a really wide range of tip widths. So you can go anywhere from the 005, which is super, super fine, all the way up to the 08, which makes a lot thicker of a line. And you can get a lot of different looks using these pens. So these are amazing for any ink drawing you might wanna do in your bullet journal. Another great option for drawing in your bullet journal is the Le Pen drawing, as I mentioned earlier. These are also a felt tip pen, but they smudge a lot less in my experience. So if that's something you struggle with, you may prefer to use these Le Pen drawing, technical drawing pens over the Sakura Micron pens. Next up is brush pens. And if you're anything like me, when you hear brush pen, your first thought is Tombow. I of course have a lot of Tombow brush pens and I use them a lot in my bullet journal. I use them for the most part for highlighting or adding color to spreads. I don't use them so much for hand lettering for two reasons. The first reason being that I'm not amazing at hand lettering. I would still consider myself a beginner at hand lettering. Whenever I'm writing in more of a calligraphy style, it's usually a faux calligraphy, not something that I wrote using a brush pen. It's definitely something I want to learn and work on in the future, but as of right now, it's definitely not my strong suit. So I don't really use Tombows for that purpose. And even if I were doing a lot of hand lettering using a brush pen, I think I'd be more likely to use something like this. This is the Tombow Hard Tip Calligraphy Brush Pen. I just find the tip is a little bit shorter and a little bit stiffer, which makes it easier to control where your lines are going and how thick or thin they are. Something like the Tombow Dual Brush Pen, the brush tip is actually quite long and very soft, which means it kind of goes where it wants to go. And it makes it a little harder to be precise in my inexperienced opinion. I will say for these Tombow brush pens, there are three that I use on a regular basis that I wanna mention, which are these three here. So the black one is amazing for filling in large areas in black. Definitely better than using even the thickest of the Sakura Microns, the 08. This one, the tip is just bigger, so it makes it easier to fill in a large area faster. And you don't have as many issues with ghosting or bleeding like you would from some other markers. So this one I use quite a bit to fill in larger spaces in black. The other one I use a lot is this beige. This is 990. And this one is amazing for any time I'm correcting a mistake. So often if I make a mistake, I will use either whiteout or some sort of white pen to correct it. But the issue is that the whiteout or the white pen will be kind of a pure blue white or bright white, whereas the paper in my bullet journal is actually more of a cream color. So that is where my trusty 990 comes in. Once I have corrected it and let whatever I use to correct the mistake dry, I can go in with this beige Tombow and fill it in. And this will help it to match my page a lot more closely. So you don't notice that I used white out or a white paint pen or a white gel pen to correct a mistake. It just looks like there's nothing there. So this has been really helpful for me and might be helpful for you if you also have a notebook with a little bit more of a cream paper or an ivory paper instead of a bright white paper. The third Tombow I use the most is this really light gray. This is N95. And this one I really like to use for subtle highlighting or for trackers when I don't want a really bright or dark color. This one is really great for that. You can see me use it in my Thank You Next 2018 in review and 2019 goals spread. Because the main headers on that spread were so bright and vibrant, I didn't want all of these smaller headers throughout the spreads to make the spread look busy. So this really light gray came in super handy. Since I just mentioned fixing mistakes using a white pen, it's the perfect time for me to talk about my favorite essential white pens. I have a gel pen and a paint pen. So these are both really great for correcting mistakes in your bullet journal, as I just talked about. The paint pen is better for larger surfaces since you can get up to quite a wide tip in these, as well as a finer tip. 
So the paint pen that I like is this one. It's the Uni Posca paint pen. The only issue I've had with these so far is that depending on how you use them and what surface you use them on, you may find the tip starts to fray a little bit, which can cause you to get not a perfectly clean line. So that's definitely something to keep in mind. You may want to be careful what surfaces you use them on or how hard you press when you're using them. But these are really great, especially for a very opaque white. As for gel pens, the one I like best is the Uniball Signo Broad gel pen. This is definitely the most opaque white gel pen I have used to date. So I really like using this for tiny little corrections and also for highlights in drawings and lettering. This is really convenient to have in your pencil case. So the last category I want to touch on is ways for you to add color and excitement to your spreads. So there's lots of ways that you can add color to spreads. Something you see really often is people using Tombow brush pens to add color. That's something I've done in a lot of my setup videos. You could also use a marker like the Crayola Super Tips, or you could go with my personal favorite, which is using watercolors. Now, of course, this depends on what kind of notebook you have. You may need to use separate watercolor paper and then paste it into your bullet journal. Or if you have a little bit of a thicker paper, like I do with my Dingbats notebook, you can watercolor directly in to your notebook. So this is my little Windsor & Newton watercolor set. It actually comes with a little water brush, which I haven't used yet, but I really love that this is just a small little travel set with every color I really could need. You have a little palette attached to it. This is definitely my favorite way to add color to spreads, and I find something like this tiny little travel set is a really great way to get into watercolor, and also it's really portable. The nice thing about the brush pen is that if you were on the go, you could fill this with water and be able to watercolor when you're out of the house so you wouldn't have to have a jar of water to use with your brushes. There are, of course, a lot of other ways to add color and interest to spreads, including gluing in different types of papers, including using washi tape. So those are all options as well. The very last category I want to talk you through is just some really basic essentially office supplies that you'll want to have on hand. So these are scissors, whiteouts, and glue. You could use a glue stick or a glue tape, whatever works for you. I hope you enjoyed this roundup of some of my favorite supplies and that it helps you if you're on search for some new supplies to use in your bullet journal. As I mentioned at the beginning of this video, I would love to hear about what supplies you love to use in your bullet journal, so please leave those in a comment down below. Thank you to my incredible patrons for supporting me. I am so thankful for you. We actually have a new patron this week, Emily, so welcome, Emily, to the Plant-Based Bride patron squad. If you want to join the Patreon family, feel free to check out the link that's in the description box. So that brings us to the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please give it a like and don't forget to subscribe. And that's it. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you very soon in my next video. Bye friends.